Hey, what is up, everybody? My name is Donnie. I am that D from the D&D show. Uh, I'm Dylan. I'm that D from the D&D show. And I'm Chandler the Shizzle Flanagan. Yeah, we're, we're looking up here. Oh, Camera's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chandler the Flanagan. He's, he's, he's used to his setup. Um, we've actually we've been waiting to get him on the show for a while. We've been we've been talking about it. Um, and last week we actually started off uh, with our topic that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and that's a little bit of persistence part two. Oh, yeah. oh part two. Persistence part, two. part number two. Right. So if you haven't seen last week's episode, go back, check out last week's episode. It really builds up into what we got going on here. Um, and this is, you know, like we said, Chisel, he's actually, he's, he's a musician, he's a producer, he's a hip hop artist, and he's been, he's been doing what he's been doing for a really long time. And his results are really starting to come through and really shine for him now. It's uh, the compound effect in action. I'm saying. Right, so what, uh, how'd you, how'd you get started? What's, well, pretty much I moved here from Vegas originally. My family, you know, we were forced to move here. My stepdad left us practically homeless. And my grandma brought us in and then we moved to Havasil. And then from, here, from there to here, and then through frustrations of like being bullied from being an outcast, like my accent, the music I listened to, took my frustrations out on the pen. Years later, I would get more into like producing and making beats. And then I just took it more serious. The more I, I grew, a little, so pretty much all I really want to do is just go from it, just out of frustrations and try to get out of human and it just kind of did its own thing from there. Right. So when when you how how old were you when you really started getting serious about this? Well, starting when I was fourteen, so probably about eighteen. That's when I really started getting more into like recording, but I didn't know what mixing was. And then in two thousand nine, that's when I actually got into an actual professional studio called Platinum Sound Lab, and then from there I took it serious and. Yeah, it's, it's it's been what it's been about ten years now since you've been really taking it seriously and really going at it now. Fourteen years. And so so what is what is it that's happened lately that that's really kind of proven? Um, you know, um, persistence. Saying, uh, exactly. Yeah. Persistence. Pretty much just hitting people up, finding record labels that want to sign me. Pretty much. Uh, so far, I have Wilmon and Stan Doris that actually want to sign me to them. I met the CEO. As well as the president, um, the last show I did, which was what uh, last weekend. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you, you did a little. Twenty nine. I, I lost. Yeah, last week. That was last week. It was this, was the first big show for. Um, and it, what was who was what record label was that? It was Vegas Mob Records. Nice. Yeah. So it's really really getting up there. So it's really starting to prove up. Um, so like you said, it's it's been. I also wanted to go with the banded records too. That's my dude, uh, Charles Cole, or, or he wants me to know him to see sickness, you know. And, but he didn't have enough people, so I was taking out different alternatives. And right now, I'm like in the process of seeing if I can't hook up my dude with these people, and they have a big thing, you know, to make a big national thing. Right. right. Well, so, and, and you've been, you've had your own little indie record label that you've been doing for a while now. Getting that record, that is the end goal after everything. That is my dream, my big pursuit, my my. My thing, I want to take care of my own artists, kind of like what DMR is doing, because they're more interested in like helping the artists and trying to get them a boosting career. And they know what I want to do, and they're like, cool. So, so I see you guys really got a kind of a sick little collaboration thing going on there. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was the name of yours again? 89 Records. 89 Records. Yeah. No, I think. So, and how did how did 89 Records come about? Like, how did how did you really create that? Because I know you've uh, we've known each other for a long. Very long time. High school. Oh yeah, we we, we go back. Quite all time. Time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was yeah, that was in the art class. Um, we weren't always super serious like we are now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So when you know we we go back a long time. So I've I've kind of I've seen all this. Like I've seen it go on. So you you've done the other things with everybody else. So but like you were with us in progressing. Oh yeah, all 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 along the way. So I've I've seen you come from, you know, being at shows with you know shop boys and stuff like that, where a Ronnie good friend Jones. a good friend of ours, Ronnie Jones, Lo Lo actually opened up for them. Um, you know, and, you know, coming and, and seeing you kind of like you guys freestyling, you know, oh, just kind of yeah. uh, kind of kind of shutting down. Is, that's to be honest it. though, back to the original question, like Ronnie Jones is actually the main reason why I actually took the mixing more serious because like. Back then, I lost my computer and like fell off and broke, and I had nothing. Oh. So he's like, "Yo, here's my uh, PC. Just use it. Do whatever the hell you want with it." 
and then have to cool that up. Ronnie, you better be watching right now. He's shouting you out, fool. Yeah, I gave him a shout out on the phone. Yeah, dude. He's, he does. He's actually, he's got some music up on there that he needs to start getting more serious about. Um, yeah, he does. He needs a good thing so he has potential. He has potential. Like, I'm gonna call him what it is. He has potential. He needs to put that potential to seriousness. Where that can love to do. pick up a little bit of persistence himself. Yeah. He actually, um, what was it? It was, it was two weeks ago. He actually he decided he was going to enter um, the Kabam Slam, and he kind of free, freestyled his own little poetry. And he actually it was his first time, and he took third place. On I that. remember that he was telling me yeah. about that last time. Yeah, I actually, I have the video of it. And I just need to get yeah, to get that to him. But technically, <laughs> initially, he's the one that really sparked the interest in the racing because he had cool had a pro on there. He was like, dude, learn this program. I love it. So I actually. So I'm looking up on Google or Google and YouTube, like how to actually mix properly and actually get more serious and from there. And then how 89 Records came about was, is like I said, it's always been a thing of mine. I've always wanted to have my own record label. I remember um, telling a couple people back from high school, like Josh Napier. I don't know if you know Josh Napier. My cousin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we 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 used to be like best friends in high school and stuff. And I told him, I remember telling him one day I'm gonna drop an album, I'm gonna own a record label. Now I'm like 14 albums in. And you know, it's just just been something I always wanted to do. And maybe that record just one day popped into my head. It was just like it had that flow. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Josh, he's he's got some really really sick. Yeah. Actually, work now. Um, he's he's doing he's actually he's doing really well for himself. And uh, I just recently saw the video he did that went like viral. He had like twenty thousand views on it. Oh yeah, him and his, him and his baby mama dance. No, no, he was one? singing. He was like. Uh, I don't, I don't. I want to say the tattoo parlor. Or oh yeah, he's he's had quite a few that have done. Yeah. 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 Now, I see one, dude. It's sounded really good too. So it's like, dude, I'm gonna be there. Yeah, yeah. it's it's awesome. He's, so, he's he's doing really well for himself now too. Um. So, so what was the the belief level? Not only yourself, but people around you, when you're like, hey, I'm gonna be a rapper or a hip hop artist or hey I'm gonna come out with my own album. Like what was your, your reactions in the beginning and stuff? From just from their reactions? Just, I mean from those around you, close close to your friends, you know. I didn't care what they thought. I just knew what I wanted to do and what I wanted to do counted. I know I didn't want to live work a nine to five and I knew I had something potential building up in me and I just it's just something I knew I had and I had to pursue it by all means because it just felt right. It just felt like my path. So that's pretty much my reaction. It's true with everyone else. You know, right. I got people that still live down on me because of the fact that you know I'm, I'm not to where I want to be, and I still at home with my you know with my folks. It's about, but it's like it's not even about that. It's about pursuing what you want so you can move out and do it the right way. Right. And so many people are so interested into um, you know, rushing, rushing, rushing. Like, okay, I got a job, get a place, so on. It's like, even though it is frustrating for me, I just like. To Hold back so I can move forward. You know, it's like a slingshot, as I call it. You know, a slingshot effect. You got to pull back to launch forward. You know, so love that. I really, right. I do love that. So, like, so I'm still at square one, but it's the fact that you know, I, it's always been on my gut. Yeah. So it's so it's like the Chinese bamboo tree. I mean, you're you're kind of underground. You're getting water. You're getting water. You're you're doing all this work behind the scenes. Everyone's like, yeah, you're not doing nothing, man. Whatever, yada yada. Yeah. yada. And then boom, now you're looking at getting signed. Mm -hmm. Now you're on a legitimate path, and and this stuff it seems like nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, and then boom, it spikes. Yeah, you know. So it sounds like you're doing the right things, you're taking the right steps. Kind of like a forest trade, right? You know? right. It goes back a little bit and goes down to the way you want. And the only reason why it took me this long to get to I wanted is because I've been in uh, pursuit of building in that records, and I was like, nah, you know, screw being signed. I want to be independent. I want to do what I want to do, and so on and so forth. Yeah, think it's too small. Exactly. And I just had that mindset, like, I'll do this. I know one day it'll take a back and blow up. And then I was uh, messing with uh, Ronnie Jones, third, as well as, you know, Cali Smiles. And I had so many artists come through. And I figured, like, I would always have a team and, you know, shut up and put the work in. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work, but nobody ever took it serious. And I was more focused on that. And that's when I was like, okay, slingshot effect. Yeah. You know, set myself back, put 89 records to the side. It's actually go get signed to a record. We'll see how it works from the inside out and how they handle the artists. And then, you know, kind of get paid to do what I want to do. So that that was my main thought. So it's like, you know, 89 records is a dream, but let's set it to the side and take a launch 
to where I want to go in life. And then that moves into sales. I mean, because basically anything in sales, you take your entirety of um, like your crowd, you know, there's only going to be a percent of that crowd that like you, and then there's going to be a percent of that crowd that buys. And then once that crowd starts getting going, you start gaining popularity. So then, then you grow a little bit, then you get on the radio, you start getting circulated and stuff, and then more people start to like you, more people start to like you. And I don't think that full process is understand by a lot of people. No, it's, um, they just think, oh, this guy's going to be, he says he's going to be a rapper, and three months from now he's not a rapper. Like, I knew he wasn't going to do it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you, you <laughs> blow up. And they're like, oh, yeah, he got lucky for sure. Yeah, but I, I, I you yeah. know, being in the world of business and like learning from like the network marketing that we that we're in actually and reading the books, I actually hate the word luck and talent now. Right. I do. People call me lucky. They don't understand like the tears and the fears that I went through, the struggles. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, like, I don't I don't believe in luck. Talent I definitely believe in luck. Yeah, I believe I in talent to a degree. Like if you actually if you're born with there are people out there that just have the book were born with it and don't know until they're on with like you know, like it, it's a fire in you. You know, it's like you have to be the persistence in it. You know, it's like no matter what, you can stick it out to the end, and that's what I've done. Well, I'm, if so. you and I, the the thing I I feel with talent is every, everybody does have their talents, and every, everybody has their things that they want, but it, it's it's a real specific thing. And other people who are more talented in certain things, like if I sat here and tried to write a hip hop song, you're going to be better at that. You have a better talent exactly. than that, but I, I write more rock punk songs, exactly. like, um, and they they go really well together. You can translate one to the other, but they're very different, um, you know. And it's like, I I play drums, and I do like I love hip hop beats. Actually, playing them behind a real drum set, and you can you produce these awesome beats, but if you sit behind a drum set, like it, it's it's a different thing. So yeah. it's talent does have a big factor in it, but you can. Luck has nothing to do with it. Luck, no. luck is a terrible word. It's probably one of the worst words yeah. out there. It's, Lucky is when you hit the lot. But yeah. even yeah, yeah. then, I don't even consider that much. You know, like it's just, I don't know. Yeah, well, but the the talent, the hard work and talent will beat luck any any day of the week. Because yeah. even if like you you were to sit behind a drum set, like you don't know like how to do the fills and everything else, but you can mess around with the sounds and you can figure it out because you know how to produce those beats. So exactly. it's it's a natural talent that I have that I can go back there and I can just start rattling stuff off. Yeah, it's the fire. It, it, well, yeah, but that's that's the difference on the talent is you're going to have to work at it a little bit more, but we can both get the same things done. And you've obviously pursued more into the music industry than I have. So then you've gotten further along with it and you, it's not even actually playing, playing the instrument. Right. Yeah, and even persistence can beat talent. You know, if Donnie's hanging out, oh yeah, he's got the drum set in his room. He looks at it, he walks by, messes with it here and there. You know, before he takes a shower, goes sit down for two minutes, and you go to a guy from one of the popular bands, and you go, look, uh, I'll friggin' sweep out your garage every day if you teach me how to play the drums. And you are hammering hours and hours and hours a day, and you don't give up. Like you can surpass Don because you have that persistence. Yeah. And I think that everybody needs to realize that is if there's something you want, you're probably going to suck at it at the beginning. Yeah. And then if you have that persistence, you're going to learn, you're going to get better. And then people are going to look at you and go, whoa, man, like, where did that come from? How did, when did you learn that? Yeah. How did you get there? What's a paradiddle? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, that persistence, man, it's... I think yeah, it was, I mean, there's a lot of things that I, I got frustrated. I remember when I first started making beats and I would listen to like Dr. Dre and like Eminem beats or whatever, and I'd get so pissed off with myself because I couldn't figure out how to make their sound, my sound sound like their sound more professional. Right. My bass and kicks used to be up higher and nothing, and I never understood the mixing process. So I, was I like, think I Ray said that too. He said there's a, like there's a kid playing the piano and he was sitting there and he was getting mad. And they asked him, you know, what's going on? He's like, I can't get my hands to play what's going on in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I see. And I know that behind the drum set because when I was younger, like, I wanted to go out there and, like, I wanted to be, like, Jimmy the Ref Sullivan and, you know, Mike Portnoy and, you know, Neil Pert. And I just, I just wanted to, like, start 
doing all these crazy fills in like like <laughs> five way independence and like I I could I could do the things but I just like and I had the way I wanted it to sound like I want I want this to go do 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 dutch but I couldn't get my body to do 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 dutch and and like for a while I was like you know what this sucks I'm terrible I'm never gonna be good at this or, or anything else but you come right back to it I do I, I did and like you you hear the other people saying it, you're like oh, I'm not that good like stop like it's whatever and then all of a sudden you hear yourself play and all you're like holy crap like that's me yeah like you have you have to look at it from the outside and, and, and quit judging yourself so much um because you if, as long as you stay persistent consistently persistent at it you go at it you're going to get better um yeah. and successful people almost have an obsession with the thing that they're locked on to because they're like you know you throw your drumsticks down the hallway and then you go pick them up and you're like oh, i'll try tomorrow yeah there's been so many times where i was like no i throw them and i stick them into the wall and i just, and like i'm just like all right, I'm gonna go grab that now, and I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna do this. I feel better now that, that I did that, dude. I was, I, so I put drumsticks to. I, I think if you don't feel the frustration or the anger in it, you're not serious. Right. That just shows your hunger want more. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's, it's like the Incredible Hulk. The more angry you get, the more he wants to destroy. You know what I mean? So it's like it's kind of the same effect. You know, the more angry you get, the more you want to build. You know, the more angry you get, the more you want to create, or depending on where you want to go. Yeah. It's like that. Like to do anything. It was like that with me from forex trading. Network marketing, it's like now that I'm actually getting to where I want to be, it's like cool, I can actually relax, set back, do a lot, you know, it's a flu shot effect I was talking about. And now it's like my trades are better, so on and so forth. There's been times where I just threw my phone at the at the couch, and I was like, screw it, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm hauling out of my network marketing, and then I'm done. You know? yeah. And then I come right back, and it's like, nah, I'm there's, stupid. There's I'm stupid if I quit. Yeah, there's something inside people exactly. like us that have that fixation that. You always want more. You always want to be a little bit better, or you want to be one of the best. Or there's always that attraction. You're like, I'm not going to do it on Saturday. I'm just, I'm not going to do my music. You know, this weekend I'm going to relax. And then you find yourself back at the computer. You find yourself thinking about beats, or you find yourself writing down lyrics. Or, well, especially when it becomes a habit, you're just so used to mm -hmm. doing it more and more. It just becomes a habit. And it's like me, like I'm yeah. waking up, get my coffee. The first thing I do before I get my coffee, I don't have to just put on my computer. And I do my thing, and then I like check the news, see what's going on in the world, and then from there I just do my music. So it's like it's a habit, you know. Once you develop a habit, it just becomes normal. It's natural. You don't even think twice about it. Well, it's like people picking up Facebook. Hey, Facebook, how's it going? <laughs> but, but most of the time, they're just sitting there, and they just like think like when they're on break at work, what are they doing? They're staring at this. Yeah. And it's, it's they're just, watching the TV show. Yes, they are watching the TV <laughs> show. Everybody is. You should too. Tell your friends. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> but sure. what, when it goes when it goes out there and actually does it, like people, they they get sucked into what's actually going on here, and we actually never. Oh it. no way! The TV show is on. What? It is. It must be four thirty on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. DJI Get your weekend started right with the D and D show and the D D C C C D P C D C D C D C D C D There's there's a CD. There there's actually there's a new a new CD a new album that you put out recently. When did that come out? Uh, when did actually, you release it? Came out like a week ago. I just haven't been able to have the chance to promote it like I wanted to. So yeah. Well, so, that's what we're here for now. Plug it in now. Let's go. The record. Zigzag. 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 Yeah, yeah. A little play off my name. Seen that? Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It has like 20 tracks. I worked my ass off to so produce it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two of them were pretty much skits. The intro skit, the outro skit, or the outro skit. But yeah. Other than that, <laughs> I mean, you got like 18 tracks on it. So I worked my ass off. On See it. that? And that was like I used to love listening to the skits, like unhold like Eminem did it a lot, and that's the one that everybody's gonna know. I did. I. Don't really listen to Eminem too much. It's just a personal preference. Don't hate on me. I know everybody. Me. <laughs> I get it all the time. It's just a personal preference. Uh, yeah, but I put, like, I, I love the little skits, the little the little breaks in there, having your own little sense of humor in it. Like, yeah. Obviously, Dylan and I do that a lot with the show. You know, we we're always messing with each other, saying we're doing something a little bit silly. Mm -hmm. um, but um, and actually, if you guys want to listen to Zigzag, you can actually find it on YouTube. Uh, look up Chisel72. It's actually running across the bottom of the screen right now. Um, you were, Where else are you at? Where else can we find your music? We're okay, gonna, everywhere. You can just Google me, Chisel72, or you'll on Google Play. Uh, oh, you're that, you're that big? 
Google just comes out and like you chisel seven two and Google's yeah. like, here, this yeah. is what you want. You type in chisel seven two, I'll pop up. Nice. Instagram. Word. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of like a one-stop shop for it. Um, we are actually going to be posting all of that in the comments down below just after this. So. My albums are a little bit different. You actually have to type in my name, in the album name. Like, so there's Digis, there's Zigzag, it's, it's Time, the Unheard, the Unheard too. I I have quite a bit of those. I wish I would have I would have brought them. So, um, like, actually, I actually went through all of my albums because, like, technically speaking, I have like 14 albums I have to so that's from when I first started to all that stuff. It's just I'm actually going back through my older stuff and redoing the beat, so I own my stuff 100%. Nice. So I don't have to deal with like you know um, licensing, sound click type stuff. stuff like that. Yeah. So I actually own 100%. So I'm well, going to come up and I, I've you know I've I've been I've been around the to the hip hop scene for a long time. So like a, a lot, a lot of the people around here who, who get, they start to get more serious about it, and they get the free beats online and everything else. And then in the background, you hear beats, <laughs> 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 like right, right in the middle of, of the hook. <laughs> 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 I got tired of those tags too. So. Oh, dude, and like sometimes, like it would be like a real cool, chill, like laid back beat, like today was a good day by Ice Cube. So it's just like yeah, yeah. real slow and chill, black, and all of a sudden you're. It's like, wow. Honestly, what really got me set on the, uh, I shit you not, like, what really got me set on this? This is, this is a family show, sir. You know, I, 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 this is like a moment of, like, you know, <laughs> okay, so it was actually Hobson that actually got me on the track of taking my beats more serious, because back then, like, you know, if you were a white rapper, or even today, like, if you're a white rapper or doing something like that, you'd be considered Eminem. So I would always do the reverse of that, you know? So if I wasn't rapping on Eminem beats, everyone would call me Big Eminem. But if I started rapping on Eminem's beats, nobody would, you know, you know, call me close to it. So I had this song called I'm an MC, and it's from The Fall Who Born, which I still have to go through and do it. Yeah. And Hopsa was actually taking, like, you know, to, uh, he'll give you notes, like, you suck as a rapper and what you need to do and how to fix on it. So I actually posted my video, I'm an MC, that used to be on YouTube. It's not no more. And he was actually like, yo, you know, the, but I think it's the Eminem beat that made it hot. So whoa. I was like, whoa. So bro, that's, that's when I really started, was like, okay, that's when I really need to kick things in the gear. And I, that's when I started taking the beats more serious. And that's when I um, I decided to mess with Heavy Hop. And we did, and my first song I ever yeah. produced was Negativity. Mm -hmm. So from there, I just, it just kind of looked at that. And that was the whole point of the album, It's Time. It's like, it's a whole new beginning. It's time to bring out what I can actually bring out. So it's like, like that. yeah, it's so, a whole new awakening, whole new rebirth. Exactly. Yeah, and I've I've noticed that like you have these little names to your albums that have something a little more personal to you that some people would just be like, oh, that's that's a name. Yeah, actually, I just because I like I said, I went back through all my albums and I went through, I made all the covers for them, and um, starting with the Fallout Genesis, I kind of made like it's like a book to chapters, you know what I mean? So it's like Fallout Genesis. Already begun, as well as the come up, which is actually like the come up already begun, and then you have the fallout reborn, which is music, medicine, chisel, it's time, zigzag, and all that, and then zigzag is the close of that chapter, and then I'm gonna work on the fallout apocalypse, which is next, which is gonna be like X, or whatever comes up after that, and then like the unheard three, or just like the different things. So, I like that. This, yeah. So it's a basically a string of concept albums. Yeah, it's, it kind of reminds me of like a Cody McCamber. Yeah, of uh, how they have their story arcs that they do through their music and yeah. their whole album tells you different. I like that. That's that's pretty yeah. awesome. It was actually something I discovered by accident because, like, I was like, you know, like I didn't like, I couldn't come up with a concept for uh, uh, Fallout Reborn, and I didn't really like the cover that I have that's up on uh, Google Play and out right now for Fallout Genesis. So I kept it all the same, like the same writing and everything. It was just two different things. Like, um, it's pretty much just a writing cover. And then it has like Fallout uh, Genesis, and then what it's called, and then Fallout Reborn is silver, and then you know Fallout Apocalypse is red, and then I think I'm gonna do a fourth one, and just kind of do that, but I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet. So it's just like just it'll come. It'll, yeah, exactly. It'll, it'll, it'll come once you start going and going at it. Yeah, that's right. that's awesome. So <clears throat> we covered we covered how to find you. Um, get it on Google. Um, go listen to his new album, uh, Zigzag. It's out on YouTube. Is that new or is it, it's a remaster? It's it's new, it's a, it's new one hundred percent. Okay, one hundred one hundred percent new. Go catch up on the latest chapter of Chisel. 
uh, and you know, while you're there, take a look at the whole back catalog, whatever he has up there. Uh, if, by the way, since we're promoting it and you started promoting it, you got to get that stuff back up there. Oh yeah, get it out there. Just you got a show today too, right? No, um, I don't think I'm gonna get the show on the 13th, like I was telling him. Okay. So what I did is I hit up uh, Will and told him, you know, like after the 13th, we're there. And so on and so forth. Yeah, you just name dropping like microphone, right? Oh, yeah, dude. What's up, Will? <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. You dropped those. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Tell your friends. <laughs> but yeah, so I hit Will up and, uh, you know, told him whatever is after that, just let me know. And I'm giving it till Sunday. You know, I told them to love their phones as part of that persistence. Right. You know, it's like, I'm hungry. I want to get it. You know, I haven't signed the well, contract. That might be a warning to you. Yeah, you might want to just answer it. Just yeah. That's yeah. how I got all those name drops to this call Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? Everybody, we've listened to all our mentors that we follow coming up, going through sales, going through music, going through everything. Like, every single one of those people are successful for a reason. And they're they're not the ones that, like, Les Brown, um, when he wanted a job to be a disc jockey, he showed up and he's like, hey, you know, good morning, sir. I'd like a job, you know, whatever. And he's like, no, get out of here. So the next day he's like, hey, good morning, sir. You know, I want a job. He's like, didn't I see you yesterday? He's like, yes, sir. But I didn't know if maybe someone got sick, someone got fired. He's like, no, no one got sick, no one got fired. Now get out of here. So the next day he comes up. Hey, good morning, sir. How you doing? You know, what's going on? I want a job. He's like, what's wrong with you, man? Didn't you come here last day? He's like, yeah, well, I didn't know if someone died or, you know, felt ran away. He's like, no one ran away or got sick or got fired, nothing, nothing. He's like, get out of here. So he's like, okay. Next day he comes back. He's like, good morning, sir. He's like, go get me some coffee. Yeah, that's like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how I got all my jobs, too. The second I got a job at Smith's, like, you know, the, the hire manager name is Lynette, the HR. She was like, I'm just going to hire it because I have a stack of names <laughs> or a stack of papers with your name on them. Yeah. So yeah, like, I'm here. You got to get the attention. This is, I'm I mean, persistent. Like, I would, look at me. I would do it a little bit more like cocky wise. Like, I know I'm going to get the job. So, what I would do is I'll shake their hand and then hip check them. Yeah, yeah. So, it'd be like this. <laughs> so, it'd be like, <laughs> so, it'd be like, so it'd be like, well, we're not hiring right now. It's like, okay, good. I'll be here tomorrow. And I walk out. <laughs> yeah, this is, and then when you turn around, look at them and shake the gloves. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So like I would do it like, <laughs> exactly for you guys who don't know hockey when they shake the gloves. That's that's exactly what's going on. Is they're saying let's go, let's fight. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty much don't do that if, if if you're trying to get employed somewhere. Don't shake gloves. Out. I'll finish and show them fear. Look them straight in the eyes and tell them exactly what's going on. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, Thank absolutely, one hundred percent. I'll see you tomorrow right. with a smile on your face, looking them straight in their eyes. I'll see you tomorrow. Shake their hand and then come back. Yeah, hey, I'm back. At least you said tomorrow. Yeah, well, at least it wasn't tonight. That might get a little. But if they really want to push my buttons, <laughs> I really want to push my buttons. It's like if they tell me no, this is how I got a job at Walmart, right? I went through the first series of interviews, just showing up every day. And there's three sets of interviews, and I went through two of them, and they never called me back for the third one. I'm like, all right, I don't take no for an answer. So what I did is I showed up like, at least like multiple times a day, write my name down on a piece of paper. I didn't care if anybody was in the department or not. I would just like press a little button, pull out the receipt, look behind the desk with a pen, write my name down. It's like, please give it to the HR, so on and so forth. And I would do that multiple times a day. And I fucking, well, excuse me. And I went through the um, all three interviews with flying colors. Nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's persistence. A, being consistently persistent and making sure you're getting the attention. You have to get attention. Otherwise, nobody's gonna even going to know who you are. They're not even going to take a second look. It, it's all about standing out. If you're not standing out, you're going to be part of the crowd and you're going to fade in. Having a definite purpose and, and a definite plan and just going back and back. Yeah, that's and one back thing I've back. always told people. It's like when people just, it doesn't matter if I know them or not. You know, it's like, hey, are you hiring? I was like, dude, we're always hiring. You just got to buzz them. Put in your name, put in your app. Buzz dude, and that, that's the thing. People are like, oh, they're not hiring. People are always looking for good people. Right. Like, well, I mean, if they're if they're running their business correctly, they're they're looking for good people. They're looking for people who want to be there and want to be actually contribute to their their vision of it and help them actually grow. Right. They don't want the people they're leeching off of it and the you know showing up late. In my experience, got an excuse, they're always sick and calling off. And ex exactly. In my experience, like even when I had like ran stores and I was in management and everything else. I wanted more of the I wanted the people who kept showing up, the people who kept coming and saying, "Hey, look at me right here." Right. Um, you know, I've I've gotten I've had to get rid of some people who were kind of doing that. They weren't performing, weren't taking their job seriously, and they were the first person that I called. Mm -hmm. And they ended up being a great choice. Um, and it's that's just it, plain and simple. You have to 
show that, hey, I'm here. We're always looking for good people. If, the, if these people are running their business correctly, always, always looking for, for great people. And when they find them, it's it's an absolute click. It's, hey, I'm here. I'm Chisel. I'm going to you know, work at your place. This is what I'm going to do for you. Not, hey, I need a job and I got kids. And like, what can you do for me? I, I need a paycheck. Like, they don't care. Yeah. Like, if I'm, if I'm running a business and someone says, hey, man, I need a job. I don't care. I opened this company to make money. I didn't open this company to run a daycare, to run, you know, a hospital, so to take care of people that are sick. Like, I opened this place to make money. I'm running a and, business, not a pity party. Right. Exactly. And if you show up and you're like, hey, I'm the guy that's going to make you money, I'm going to hire you. Because the guy that I hired that was like, oh, I'm always on time and this and that, and his wife's sick and he don't show up, and his kid's sick and he don't show up, and his dog ran away and he don't show up, and he ran out of gas this far and he don't show up. And I'm like, I don't need this guy. He's costing me money. He's costing me yeah. overtime because he's not showing up. So then, a, you know, someone that's hungry comes in and is like, hey, what's up? I want this job. I want to be Weren't here. You I want to do the job. Weren't you here yesterday? Yeah, yeah I was. I didn't yeah. know if you know, someone got sick or got fired and someone died. <laughs> exactly. You, you, I mean, well, another thing that Les Brown says in that same thing is, I was hungry. Right. And I, I love the way he says it. Uh, but And that's that's exactly what it is. That's what you got to be. Mm-hmm. You got to be like a hungry dog in the back of the meat truck. Mm-hmm. You got to be hungry. It's like uh, the uh, Millionaire life. Booklet by Frank Redone, Who's Got My Money. Oh, I love you. I love it. <laughs> Who's Got I love it. That's my Uncle G right there. Hey, dude, be obsessed or be average. Yeah, I was actually going to say that. If you if you want to figure out how to you know get fully committed to something completely, obs- like That's obviously funny. he's been obsessed with music. breaking out into your music career for a long time now, um, 10 years since you got started taking it seriously. Uh, and... You know, like you were saying, whenever you need to go get a job and you wanted to go get one, you were obsessed about getting your getting out in front of people and getting there. So, be obsessed or be average is an awesome book to really, really help you out with that. That's by Grant Cardone. And one thing I've always done to keep myself persistent in music is I never took my job as serious as I should. Because you know, people are like, "Oh, you got to get a job full time hours." It's like, like I said, like I felt I had this passion. So what I would do instead of like keeping like the music as a hobby and my job, my full time job, I would always go part time on my job and treat that as the hobby. And you do music as my full time job, even though I was first things first. first. Exactly. Right. So I would keep that as a hobby. It would be like a mindset, a trick to your mind. You know, it's like I want to be part time here, this full time. Right. But not not in the sense of showing up, giving half hearted efforts, nothing like that. No, like no. you showed up, you did your job, you worked hard, but that was like a hey, I need to make a little bit of money to keep this rolling, and then focusing and just being obsessed with your dream. Exactly. Because if you let your yeah. job take control of your life, you're going to lose your life, period. Yeah. Don't sell your soul to the company. Wake up, exactly. pay bills, go home, you know, wake up. Pay and it's like home. funny because every job I go to, everyone is brain dead. You know? Well, and that's that's the biggest thing is you have to live your life according to your terms. You have to design your own life. And that's I think that's one of the biggest steps in actually doing it. Um, we actually, we're almost out of time here, guys. Um, I know we started getting good at it. Sure, Chisel will be back again one day. I really had a, I had a lot of fun today. This has been a long time in the making, so we've been waiting for it. Um, My bad for my language. <laughs> yeah, we we haven't tamed him yet. He's hip hop, man. He's hip hop. Yeah, he's like that from those guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hey, if you guys want to get your name in the D and D show fishbowl, all you got to do is hit a love, on, drop a comment, and share this post. Uh, what it is, what the fishbowl is, is every six months we have a giveaway that we do, or we, once a month we have to give away every six months we purge your names out. So just because you didn't win this month doesn't mean that you're not going to win. Are we giving away? We're giving. We we're giving away the book. We we talked about this last week too. Um, yeah, we should. We should. Yeah. Um, Dylan and I Special actually. Edition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dylan and I, um, we we've, we've set up our first book. Um, we're still in the process of getting everything wrapped up for it, but we wanted so to let you guys know about Saturday. Saturday, it should be, with, it should be up on, on Kindle, um, Kindle Books Saturday. What? Yeah. So if you don't, oh, uh, you can. I didn't know that. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, um, well, actually, it'll be it'll be posted to the Facebook page. So t- stay tuned for that. It is coming. Um, we'll be we'll be putting it up on Kindle, um, and then soon after that, we will uh, we will have a. A published version, a, a print version. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do, um, we are going to give away some of the books, but we're actually going to do special edition, limited edition books um, for those of you guys that like, comment, and share on the show. And only those people in the drawing are going to ever get those. They're never going to be for sale. We're never going to give those away. Those are only for the dedicated show people, and those will have some extra stuff in it. 
So don't miss the opportunity for <laughs> your knowledge. Yeah. I mean, how many books? How many books do you think you've been through? Oh, quite a few. Like I'm a slow reader. Like I like reading a little bit at a time and then kind of absorb it and take it into effect. So I take forever to read through my books. Mm -hmm. But I like to, you know, just everybody that's hungry. Actually, I take that back. Okay. Not, the books are knowledge. It's applied knowledge that's power. Right? You need the knowledge yeah, to knowledge be able to apply. Power, but knowledge if power. you don't apply the knowledge, I mean, librarians should be billionaires. You know what I mean? Yeah, but if, right. if they were to take that knowledge and do something with it. That's powerful, man. It's I mean, only the illusion. Yeah. So. If they got that persistence and that consistency and that hunger, I mean, that just that hunger inside and that obsession of, man, this is going to get done. Because a lot of people, man, they start off in their garages and everybody points and laughs. And, you know, you just don't really believe those guys. And then, yeah. boom, and they, they just blow up. And they're like, how did that happen? Like Eminem oh, I must be unlucky. Eminem hops. And Eminem used to break into places to stay. And then he got discovered by Dre. And the next thing you know, blew up. Nobody. Would think it would amount to anything. Einstein was the same thing. They never, they thought he was handicapped, mm -hmm. and then he just blew up as one of the world's biggest scientists. Nikola Tesla. They thought he was mad, mm -hmm. you know. So the first yeah, guy, that was my problem too. <laughs> the first guy that ever <laughs> came out with the radio, and he's like, "Hey, I can send this invisibly, and you're not going to be able to hear it until it reaches this other little box." Marconi. He, they were, he was actually and locked they, up. They, they put him in a madhouse. The guy that came out with his the radio, friends his friends locked, locked him up in the Vincent institution because they're like, yeah, sure they can, buddy. And then he's like, ha -ha, here it is. Yeah. No, I actually meant it. <laughs> all right. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today, guys. My name is Donnie. I am that D from the D&D show. I'm Bill Bourgeois. I am that D from the D&D show. And I'm the other random guy. Chisel. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chisel. Uh, he's actually he's got a new album out. You guys can go check it out on YouTube. Just Chisel72. The title of it is Zigzag. You can check it out in the comments below. Peace. Yeah. End it. End it. I'm sorry. <laughs>